Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Coming up on Harvest, popular Bible teacher Nancy DeMoss Wugelmoth shares how all women, both older and younger, can live out the beauty of the gospel together. And what does it really take to be healed? For answers, Pastor Mark Lance examines the life of the Old Testament character Naaman the leper. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Harvest Show. So glad you could join us today. Valerie Lowe alongside my friend and colleague Chuck Freeby and Cube Mate. We kind of well, I mean, we what? You live maybe two or three inches away from me <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> upstairs, it seems that way. How are you? How was your, uh, your outing? I know you had to do Notre Dame sports. Tuesday, we went up to Ann Arbor and broadcast a baseball game. Got back into South Bend about 1.30 in the morning, so decided needed a little time to recover yesterday. It was good to have a day to recover and spent some time on social media and mm -hmm. came across an article, actually, from our friends at Catholic Online with the seven things that Christians should not do okay. on social media. So you can tell me, because you've seen some of my posts, I've seen some of yours, you can tell me if I'm doing any of these things okay. and tell me to cease and desist. <laughs> uh, number one, don't be whiny. So bad things happen to everybody. Unless you're asking for help or prayer on something, don't complain, don't whine which is good advice all the time anyway. That's right. No, you do not whine. Okay. Stop okay. being passive aggressive. Okay. When someone writes a post, do you make snarky remarks but add a smiley face to show your words aren't really meant to be mean? No, no, you don't do that and neither do I, but I've seen it so many times, oh, read it so many times, people airing their, you know, their dirty laundry or they have a beef with someone and they take it out on them and well, on social media. That, that's number three, keep private things private. If someone did something to you mm -hmm. and they need to be confronted, do it in person, don't do it on social media. And it's so easy, isn't that like, you know, isn't that so much easier for you to go on social media and throw off on someone instead of taking, having the courage to, t you know, to talk with the person face to face? What's next? I have been guilty of this one. Okay. Do some research first. <laughs> Basically confirm your sources. Right. And, and occasionally uh, I've been taken in by the story that might be five years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody else posted it and you think, Oh, this is, no, it's not news, it's five years old, or it's, as somebody might say, fake news. Okay, I remember doing that. Um, it was not fake news, but it was an older story that right. I read, and then I even called my friend and said, hey, did you hear about this? She said, yeah, that happened about two years ago. <laughs> uh, number five, stop showing off your faith. It's wonderful to talk about the Lord and share upcoming church events, it's even better when your professions of faith help draw others closer to God, mm -hmm. but the most prominent, but don't constantly talk about how great your faith is, how dutiful you are, and how very religious you are. I, I, I certainly hope I would not do that. That's called sanctimony. Yeah, no, you don't do that. And, you know, every now and then we'll see a sentence or two, you tie it nice to get, tie it together nicely, a post um, with a comment about faith, but not, you don't overdo it. Okay, Jason's telling me to wrap, so I'll make That's the it. last two quick. <laughs> uh, end gossip, always great advice. And number seven, enough with the bragging. Don't just go on and promote yourself all the time. Well, I am going to say this. You can join the conversation <laughs> on Facebook. You can start by liking us. Uh, <laughs> you can send your emails directly to the set of harvest at liveatlessee.com. Don't go anywhere. World News begins right now. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Friends, it's Thursday, April 6, 2017, and here's what's happening in your world. North Korea and trade are likely to dominate talks between President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping as the two men come face to face for the first time today. Looming over the visit will be North Korea's missile provocations. I think at the top of the agenda will be North Korea. 
but next will be I think trade relations between uh, the US and China and then you've got a long list of issues of common concern all the way from the South China Sea to Taiwan, the East China Sea. The two leaders are due to meet at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida, a venue chosen to give the summit a more informal feel. Autopsies conducted on three Syrians brought to Turkey after this week's assault in the northern provinces show they were subjected to a chemical weapons attack. More than 80 people were killed in that suspected chemical attack Tuesday in the town of Khan Shakun. Well, there's no doubt in our mind uh, that the Syrian regime under the leadership of Bashar al-Assad is responsible for this horrific attack. And uh, we think it's time that the Russians really need to think carefully about their continued support of the Assad regime. Syria's foreign minister categorically denies his government used chemical weapons in any attack. Residents of Tikrit say suspected Islamic militants unleashed multiple attacks in their city, killing at least 22 people. Five suicide bombers targeted a police patrol and broke into a police officer's house in Tikrit late Tuesday. Ten policemen were among the dead, up to 31 people wounded in those attacks. Also in Iraq, the battle for Mosul continues. Helicopter gunships were seen in the skies over that city today. Iraqi forces backed by the U.S.-led coalition are battling to drive the remaining Islamic State fighters from Iraq's second largest city. Iraqi forces have entirely surrounded the city, leaving ISIS with no escape route. But that plan is also trapped an estimated 400,000 civilians being used by ISIS as human shields. Residents of Mosul say ISIS fighters routinely shoot anyone trying to leave. And storms across the southeastern United States produced a large tornado and more than a half dozen smaller twisters on Wednesday. Trees were toppled, power lines brought down in Georgia, while heavy rains drenched areas of Alabama and South Carolina. The severe weather outbreak is the second to hit the South this week, but fortunately no deaths or significant injuries have been reported from this most recent outbreak. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance has today's connections, but up next, Bible teacher Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth shares how all women can live out the beauty of the gospel together. We're right back to speak with her when we return after this. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. When Nancy DeMoss Wogglemuth said, I do, to her husband, Robert, she was adorned in a beautiful, blinged-out wedding gown. As a Bible teacher, Nancy says, the book of Titus offers rich teaching on how all women, both older and younger, can live out the gospel together as the bride of Christ. Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Nancy. Well, thank you, Valerie <laughs> and Chuck. I'm excited to talk to you because the last time I interviewed you, you were happily single. I had a different name. Okay, you had a different name. Now, let me see it. He put a ring on it. He Look at did. that. A beautiful <laughs> ring that my daddy gave to my mother 40 some years ago before he went to heaven. And Robert surprised me and gave me that ring uh, when we got engaged. I was 57 years of age and mm -hmm. never been married. And what a sweet change this has been at this new season of my life. That's right. And you, I mean, at that time, I think when I interviewed you the last time you were committed to being single but a transition took place and it kind of and you had women to come alongside you I did to help you make you know a godly decision or to mentor you in this process yeah I've loved having older women in my life for mm -hmm. all of my life and I've yet I've loved now in this season being an older wi woman to 
other younger women. But when I got married, I'm a newlywed still, just about a year and a half married. And um, I'm so thankful for women who are further down the road than I am, who've mm -hmm. been so encouraging to me, and who've prayed for me and for Robert and have helped me to move into this new season. And, and it's just been a reminder of what's true for all of us, whether men or women, married or single, young or old, is that we need each other. We're not intended to live this life in isolation, but we need each other as we move in our pilgrimage toward Christ-likeness. It, it's fun to read the book, though, and see that you, as the kids say today, keep it real. One of the <laughs> things that you talk about is, is making that transition to being married, and all of a sudden you're sleeping in a bed with somebody, and that threw you for a loop. It for was a huge <laughs> adjustment. My husband is over in the corner, and I just heard him laugh a little bit because he was a widower. He had been married 44 years, mm -hmm. and um, God had taken his wife home through cancer, and then mm -hmm. I was a first time, never married, long time, convinced single woman and so there were some huge adjustments and I remember that that early in our marriage just being awake one night kind of sleep deprived because I wasn't used to having somebody in the room much less a man in the bed and thinking what in the world have I done mm -hmm. but you know when we don't know what to do we lift our eyes up, we turn them to the Lord, and we get other people involved in our lives who can say, look, I understand this, this is, this is new, but God's going to give you grace for this, and he has, and Robert is the sweetest man in the history of the world, so <laughs> um, he's, he's been so grace-filled, and that's made it easier for me in a way that some women don't have. I know I have lots of friends who are in some very difficult painful marriages and they need God's grace in an even different way but that's again where we need each other as women to come alongside and not bad talk about our husbands mm -hmm. uh, but to say can you help me think this through and take me to God's word and show me what this looks like. So the topic of your, the title of your book is called Adorn, Living Out the Beauty of the Gospel Together. And I talked about how you had on this beautiful blinged out wedding gown, but you say that we can be adorned with the gospel. Kind of unpack yeah, that. Yeah, Titus too, uh, the young little fledgling church on the island of Crete, Titus was the pastor and, and they're trying to figure out what to do in this Roman empire where Nero's out to kill all the Christians and how are they gonna survive? How are they going to thrive and how are they going to reach the world with the gospel? And you can think of all kinds of programs or plans that Paul could have told them to have. But what he does instead is says to the pastor, you teach the word, teach sound doctrine, and then get the older women to live exemplary lives of what Christ-likeness looks like, to be models of the faith, and then get them to teach the younger women how to do the same, how to love their husbands, how to be kind, how to be self-controlled, which is such a counter um, cultural thing in today's mm -hmm. world. And he's yeah. saying, by doing this, you're gonna show that the gospel is beautiful. And people around are gonna say, what is this? How can I know Christ? So from the outset, as Robert and I were planning our wedding, we just said, our goal is for our wedding and our marriage and our lives to showcase the loveliness of Christ. We wanna put him on display and that's what the world needs today. But we do that through interconnected, intentional relationships. And Titus 2 spells that out and that's really what this book is about. Well, and you talk about sound doctrine and I think that's one of the things that troubles a lot of people is because there is so much taught out there by a variety of churches and people say, well, how do I know what's sound mm -hmm. and what's not? Yeah, that's why we got to know this book and be grounded in it. And, and I think to some people, the whole concept of sound doctrine, that, that's the starting place in this Titus passage. So that's the starting place in my book. And I'm thinking, how can I make this interesting? Because people think doctrine, that's right. dry. Right. Who's interested in that? They want the good stuff. And I'm saying, you know, it's like if you don't build a solid foundation for your house, you can have beautiful rooms and beautiful decorations, but that house is not going to stand if you don't build a strong foundation. Our foundation is Christ, the living word, and this book, the written word of God. So one of my pleas with women today is you've got to know God through his word and anything that doesn't line up with that, including anything you hear me teach. If it doesn't line up with this book, they know thank you. You also say not to, you also talk about don't give up on that modeling career. And I bring this up because, you know, we see women, you know, they, we just don't want to age. You know, we don't want to get older. So to say, 
older women help teach the younger women, that's a that could be a conflict right there. What do you say to older women to get them started with that process? And it's a little intimidating because today what is new and young and novel and mm -hmm. you know 20 years old is the, the end thing, but um, there's something very beautiful about an older woman who walks with God and her beauty is that inner beauty of Christ-likeness. And I'll tell you, from the time I was a little girl, call me strange, my goal in life has always been to be a godly old lady. <laughs> um, and people have said to me, don't rush the old part, you know, <laughs> it'll come. But um, to, to be a woman who reflects the beauty of Christ and this gives our lives value and worth and it gives us something to pass on to these younger women who may have, you know, they don't have the stretch marks, they may not have the lines on their faces, they may still have their natural color, their dark colored hair. I lost, I went gray a long time ago. Um, but what they're longing for is to have an older woman who can come alongside of them and help them know God and walk with Christ and live in that marriage or that single lifelong situation. And so I say the women around us don't need us to be cool. I don't have any cool factor. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it when I was young, mm -hmm. um, but they need us to be women who know God and love God and love them and will encourage them. And I have so many young moms, young single women in my life. They text me, they call me, they want to get together with Robert and me because they see something that, um, they see that we're following Christ. Mm -hmm. Not that we're perfect because we share with them our weaknesses too and our failures and our faults. We're very honest about that. But we say, come, we want to walk with you. And that, that encourages them. There's a segment of the population that we may not have addressed yet. We've talked single and married, but there is an increasing number, sadly, of divorcees yes. out there. Yes, sure. What will they get from this? Well, you know, all of us, whether whatever our marital status, we have learned things in life as we've gotten older from our failures and from the things that have been done to others, uh, that others have done to us, that we've had to learn to forgive. And so we share out of our life message. So someone who's been divorced, they've been through that pain and they're thinking, I'm washed up. How could God ever use me? And I'm saying, no, you need to come alongside these younger women and help them think through how to deal with difficulties in their marriage or how to not make wrong choices about who they marry. Um, let them know that you have found God to be faithful in the deepest valleys and the hardest places of your life and they need to hear that. So everyone's in this. This is not a calling for some great Bible teachers or public figures. This is a calling for all of us to link arms and hearts and engage with each other in pursuing Christ and becoming like Him. So Nancy, is the responsibility, is it the responsibility of the older woman to go and approach a younger woman or can a younger woman approach? Yes and yes. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. yes. the younger women say to me, the older women aren't interested. And the older women say, the younger women aren't inter are not interested. And I say, whatever you are, you take initiative. Mm -hmm. You ask God to point you to another woman and just ask questions. It, does, it doesn't have to be some big formal, official, lifelong commitment. Just ask, how can I pray for you? I do this in the aisle of, our, I call it my aisle ministry at church, before and after <laughs> services. Just how can I pray for you? How can I encourage you? And then together, we're going to adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, and together, we're going to unpack even more of this message with Nancy tomorrow. So be sure to join us. To connect with Nancy, go to adornedbook.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her project. It's called Adorn. And be sure to like us on Facebook so you can get exclusive content from Nancy. We'll be right back. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible. $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by Making Healthy Choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, a vegan prebiotic powder. 
powerful Probiotic Blend Plus, a formula that promotes regularity and contains absolutely no gluten. Liquid Multigels, a multivitamin with lutein, lycopene, and flaxseed oil. And Mineral Concentrate for maximum cell function and better focus. The all-natural ingredients in the Restoration Pack may help lower inflammation and in some cases impact weight loss. To order the new Restoration Pack for just $59.95 plus free shipping, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. That's 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you. So on Tuesday, we started a conversation that we entitled The Path to healing, and we're using the Old Testament character of a man by the name of Naaman, found in 2 Kings chapter number 5. And in this text, there are some practical principles that I believe you can follow so you can find that path to your healing. The first one I shared with you was simply this, acknowledge the problem. Naaman had all of this going for him, but he was a leper. You've got to come out of denial. You've got to come out of hiding, and you've got to be willing to acknowledge your problem. The second thing I want to share is, is simply this. You must get to the right place. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 6. Let's look at this verse. The Bible said he brought the letter to the king of Israel. And he said, now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may recover him of his leprosy. Now, first of all, when you understand that Naaman had to go to Israel, Know that Israel was a conquered nation. So to Naaman, Israel's a second-rate nation. It's a third-world country. Israel had absolutely nothing to offer him. But I believe that God had to get Naaman out of Syria because God wanted to get Syria out of Naaman. You see, Syria was where Naaman had power. Syria was where Naaman had position. This is where Naaman he was somebody. His name meant something. And so as long as Naaman remained in Syria, he would cling to his power. He would cling to his position. No doubt, he would cling to the fact that he was somebody special. And I really believe as I teach you today that God is speaking to someone right now. Because as long as you remain in the current position you are in life, you're not going to be healed. I feel like I'm talking to someone who is needing some emotional healing right now. Your heart needs to be mended. But there's things or maybe there's people that you are clinging to in life that really quite frankly are the root cause of your pain. But you cling to them because they're your safety net. You're afraid to let go because that's all that you've ever known. But you see, friend, God is moving you out of Syria, so to speak, so that he can get Syria out of you. He's moving you away from everything that you're clinging to because you're clinging like a security blanket so you can be in a position God's moving you to where you have to trust God. And I'm sure Naaman could have thought, well, why can't the prophet just come here? Why do I have to go to Israel? And you may be watching right now and say, well, why can't God just heal me in this position? And he absolutely can. But the problem is, until you change your position, until you get out of that position and the people that you're around, you will still be surrounded by the very things that are causing you pain. You're going to go right back to the same position of hurt that got you there in the first place. You've got to get up out of Syria. You've got to be willing to go someplace in life that you have never gone because where you are is hindering your healing. Oh, listen, I'm praying for you right now. I really believe that your emotional, heartfelt healing is just over the horizon. God is ready to move on your behalf, but you need to acknowledge your problem. You need to get to the right place and let God bring you into the position where you can experience that divine healing, that divine touch. Listen, today, today is your day. Now is your moment. Step in to your healing. See Proline. And of course, that will see prayer line is open for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is call it up at 1 800 365 3732, or you can go online to prayer at send your uh, 
prayer requests in or send them in by mail to 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. We have breaking prayer requests. These <laughs> just handed to me as I've been sitting here talking to you. We have Sheila from California. Her daughter is six months pregnant and the baby boy is underdeveloped. Uh, we're praying that the baby's growth accelerates and that he's born normal and healthy. Marge, who's a partner in faith with us, and Marge, thank you for that. She says, please pray that God will send someone around to keep me company. All I have is my dog, and I want someone that's human as well. Mm. And uh, Valerie, who's a partner in faith, says, I have a couple of people to pray for. Mark has pancreatic cancer. Will, who has acute, acute leukemia. These men have been hurting and holding on for a great while now. Please pray the Lord will heal them both. Won't you pray for Indeed us? Indeed I will. You know, the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much, and that's why we pray with you at pray in prayer line. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone who is called in. We pray, Lord, that you would touch this woman and her child. We pray for this person who has pancreatic cancer. Father, we thank you so much because of your healing power and your virtue. We thank you, and we'll be back to say thank you, Lord, for answering answering these prayers. And in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, certainly we want to thank Nancy DeMoss for being with us today. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. The guy get used to saying that. <laughs> She's going to be with us tomorrow. So I'll get another chance at it. I hope you'll be back with us too. We'll see you tomorrow on another edition of Harvest. There's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly. Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at Lacey Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacey.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the C Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the C Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.